Hello everyone, Rurikon here, and today I'm bringing you guys my first impression of Mars Warlogs. So you guys might be wondering, how the hell did you buy Mars Warlogs, and what the hell is this game all about? And uh, you wouldn't be alone in that question. I kind of asked myself that exact same question last night, um, because I was playing Dark Souls with a friend of mine. I mean, which night am I not playing Dark Souls in, let's be honest. But uh, a friend of mine told me about this game, and he was like, oh yeah, this is uh, an RPG that's coming out, it just kind of came out today, and I'm like, how come nobody's heard about it? I mean, what what the hell is it about this game that a lot of people seem to not have really heard about it? It kind of came under the radar of a lot of people, at least definitely for me, it came out of nowhere. And I was just like, oh well, I guess I'll buy it and I'll check it out. So last night, I've been checking out um, the game with a friend of mine, we were both like, kind of um, doing subquests and whatnot and telling each other how he kind of felt about the game and so I thought that today I would make um, I would make a first impressions kind of thing out of it so let's start by plan I'm just gonna go ahead and continue showing you uh, the game itself uh, I'm not going to start the game from scratch because the game kind of takes a little while to pick up so I think that the representation that I'll show you a uh, of, I think it's a couple of hours in. Not exactly sure how long I've been playing for, but it's also been a lot about figuring out the mechanics of the game itself. So, I mean, a lot of that time was also me just kind of figuring out the ropes and whatnot. So, you guys might be wondering, so what kind of a game is this? This is, this is an RPG. It's got uh, a lot of dialogue and choices and whatnot for the stuff that you do in game. It lets you kind of be uh, the good guy or kind of like the rogue guy, the bad guy. There seems to be quite a couple of choices in between dialogues. So let me just go ahead and try and get on a quest here so that I can show you that the game obviously has quests, side quests, you also have a diary. Now the diary is actually not of your character, it is of this guy over here, Innocence. You guys might be wondering, whoa, what? Why the hell is he called Innocence? Well, it's kind of a theme for your faction on Mars. You're, you're part of a faction called Aurora, as far as I can tell, but I, I don't know a lot of the backstory of my own character because they don't really tell you at the start. You know more about the story of this guy than your character. So, at the start of the game, this guy kind of arrives where we are now, and this is basically a prisoner of war camp in Mars because there has been some... Uh, Wars. I, I didn't read the whole backstory of the game, but there have have been several wars in regards to water. Mostly, it seems it's about water. Um, and during those wars, several factions of people that supply water water have been uh, formed. And one of those factions is your own, called Aurora. And in Aurora, everybody gets like this one name that's supposed to kind of indicate what kind of a person you are. So this guy got the name Innocence. Your own character has the name, ah, uh, what is it, Temperance. Your own character is called Roy Temperance. But yeah, the other guys from the other factions are just called normal. Like for instance, this dude, oh, they didn't tell me the name. How about this guy? This is just an abundant soldier. But yeah, basically the other people have normal, um, normal names. So, let's see, we have several quests that we need to do here. Uh, make all the preparations for escape, diversion. Oh yeah, we need to go to the recruitment's office. Now, the recruitment's office, we, ha we actually have to go to the crater. As you can see there in the map itself, you'll be able to see that there's like quest markers as well as people of interest. So we're going to be heading down to a quest just to kind of give you guys a feel for the game. You can skip these animations, um, and I understand why, because, I mean, the first time you kind of open a door like this, you're like, oh, the animation's cool, why would you want to skip it? Because they make you travel the same look, at, at least unless you're, like, super familiar with the game and it's, like, your second playthrough or something. They make you travel through the same locations quite a few times, and a lot of the times it's like... Uh, You'll be going through the location and you already know, okay, I have to go here, here, and here, and you know the locations that you want to go to. And just waiting for that animation does get tedious sometimes, so it's good that it's there. There's also a couple of uh, loading screens. Basically, the game loads up uh, portions of the map. The, 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 the game is very segmented from what I can tell. But something that you have to keep in mind with a game like this is that this is a budget title. So this is not 
like a um, an RPG that has the same uh, budget than let's let's say Mass Effect. This does not have the budget of Mass Effect. Having said so, I found myself still strangely compelled to, to keep on playing the game. Uh, this is a twenty dollar title, if I'm not mistaken, because it's twenty euros, and usually that kind of stuff translates one to one. Um, and you've got several quests. What the hell is going on here? Ooh, they're messing with the mutant. G give me just a second. I do want to do something that I had forgotten. Uh, game. Yeah, difficulty. I need to lower the difficulty because uh, hard in this game is actually hard, which ha which is extremely refreshing for me because I actually like playing on hard. The thing is, for the m for the purpose of this particular first impressions video, I don't want to be wiping yeah, fights all over the place, asshole. and I have a feeling that's what's going to hey, happen here. Looky here, it's almost ready to bite. Come on, don't look me in the eye. Drop your eyes, or you'll get it. <laughs> Easier to train than a dog. Yeah, but lots more disgusting. Rather have a dog by far. What's going on here? Hey, it's all right, Roy. We're just teasing the animal a bit. We're bored out of our skulls. So basically what's happening here is now I'm going to have uh, several choices of dialogue of how I can respond to this situation. Um, and basically they're teasing a mutant. Now, mutants in this game are basically people that were exposed to radiation and they became deformed or something like that, you know, like because the sun's radiation on Mars is terrible, it makes people become these ugly, grotesque mutants. And there's also some of the mutants who have bred and they gave birth to other mutants. So that's kind of how the mutant species came about to be. But basically mutants are viewed as uh, less than slaves. Like, you guys remember back, I don't know exactly which year it was, but in the U.S. you guys have obviously, a, and I say you guys because a lot of my audience is from the U.S. Don't be insulted if you're not from the U.S. But basically in the U.S. you guys have a big culture on slave, um, I mean, I'm not expressing myself all that well. But basically in the U.S. there was all those slaving problems. You guys know the, the problems with the slaves and whatnot. And this kind of seems that is represented over here through the form of these mutant guys. So now I get a choice. I can let these guys keep on harassing the mutant, or I can intervene. However, I'm, I'm the way I'm playing my character. I feel that I would probably sh that I probably should intervene. So let's say, uh, leave him alone. I can find some other way for you guys to keep busy if you want. Shit! You defending the mutie, or you just like pissing everybody off? Get the fuck out of here! You're right. You're lucky there are guards around. We're not the Fatso's gang. We know how to fight. Bring it on. <laughs> Badasses. Come on, bring it on. The Fatso they're talking about is basically because at the start of the game you have to beat up a fat guy because a fat guy wants to rape good old innocents here. <laughs> yeah, this, it's, it's very um, adult themed so far from what I can tell. And by adult themed, I mean it's like... This is not the kind of game you want to have, I don't know, a 14-year-old play or something like that, you know? Let's see... Oh, I can't talk with him. I just defended him, but I can't talk with him. Okay, whatever. What's this? This is probably the mutant zone, so I have to go over here and talk to Saul. I hope that I at least get into some combat to show you guys the combat system. Now, something that you guys probably notice in that interaction is that the voice acting in this game is definitely not its strongest. Uh, its what can strongest I do for you, prisoner? What can I do for you, prisoner? What does it take to get work at the cistern? Yes, because I need to get work at the cistern to get the water. Because our objective right now is to escape this this uh, prisoner of war camp. We cleaned out the drilling well, and I'm kind of bored. Apparently, the guys who work at the cistern have it easy. You haven't been here long enough. Till now, only prisoners who've been here a long time get to work there. Jay over there is the guy who picks the team. One of the first guys here. Okay. If I understood right, a mutant attacked a guard. What happened? Just a mutant going a bit haywire. Maybe he got the dog sickness. Who knows? He hit a guard and he's been hiding since. Our technomancer didn't like that too much. 
He said whichever of us nails him will get a promotion. And it wouldn't be a good idea for the other skin jobs to hide him. I know our technomancer. He said he'd kill ten if we didn't find the guy. And he'll do it. Mm. Seems a bit drastic, don't you think? Better off not having a riot. I'm gonna take a look at the dust, in case I happen to find that smartass of yours. Don't particularly want to find myself in the middle of a new war. Yeah, you do that. Uh, but if you find him, don't try anything. Come back and talk to me first. See ya. Right. So usually you'll have lots of choices about the, um, about the kind of stuff that you can do in regards to a quest. Like, I'll imagine that probably we can even hand in the, um, the mutant to this guy, the, the mutant that's rebellious or whatever. And if we do, we'll get a certain outcome, whereas if we uh, don't hand him in, we can probably cause a riot, which is actually our current objective in the quest, if you guys see here. Uh, find the rebel dust among other mutants. So we, we have to create a diversion in order to get ready for the big escape. We also have a couple of side quests, but I'm not going to do any of those. So th is this guy Jay? No, where's Jay? We need to look for Jay. Saul, Joe, a diversion. Oh. I thought this would be Jay. Let me just check the quest here. The, the, I'm, I've only played this game one one time last night, so don't don't judge me too much. Let's see, Waterford trip. Talk to Jay. I think Jay is actually the one at the mess hall, which is right. interesting because Jay is actually Why a friend of ours. I have a feeling that there are better uses for a rebel mutant than turning him into the guard. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Let's talk with the Rebel Mutant. He's going to probably be over here. This is the area where all the mutants are. If I remember correctly. Yeah, this is the area. There's several mutants over here, as you can see. So let's have a little word with a couple of them. If we can find any of them that matters. Well, there seems to be one over here. No. Let's talk what to Scum. What do you want with me, man? Are you the one who hit the guard? You're the one who hit the guard, huh? Why are you asking? Just tell me the truth. You don't want to piss me off, believe me. Do you really think so? I have nothing to lose. Oh. Okay. Combat orders. Use the tactics menu to give orders to your companions. Oh, I haven't been able to give orders to my companions up until this point, so... Interesting. I'm just gonna beat this guy up. Come on, what you got? Kick your ass, Mr. Mutant Man. Oh. There's also a parry mechanic, so as you can see, the fighting here is like you got two attacks. One of them is a guard break, which is the unarmed attack, which you see there me doing the kick. The then you have your. Looking for, man. Mm. This was fast. So I suppose there is no longer a reason to hide the fact. What will you do with this knowledge, man? As you can see now, I have I can I have the option to turn him in. What the hell is he doing? Yeah, there's a couple of glitches every now and then in animations. Like, right now we're supposed to be having a conversation. He's like, I'm gonna stab you. I'm gonna stab you, fool. But no, I have a proposal you a for you. life here? I want a better life somewhere else. I suggest we put aside our differences and work together. In what manner, man? I have a feeling it's only a matter of time before the situation becomes really explosive between the guards and the dust. Especially after your little outburst. The abuse we suffer is abominable. I acted through anger, and yet I believe it was truly just. I'm not judging you, so save your excuses. I'm just asking for a little time. Don't start anything until you get my signal. I'm preparing something as well, and our two plans will work a lot better if we're coordinated. <sighs> you yourself have raised a hand against the dust. What guarantee have we that you are not attempting to ensnare us? Test me. So be it. We have need of cutting tools, man. Each workshop in this camp has a toolbox which it is forbidden to touch. 
Bring us two of these boxes. By helping us, you shall prove your good faith. Tools, huh? I expected maybe you'd want weapons. The weapons you could obtain for us are too weak, man. And their disappearance would create problems for us. No. We have need of tools. With such tools, we will make weapons. Our weapons. And our destiny. Deal. I'll bring you the tools and you keep cool until you get my signal. That is the agreement. Okay. So as you can see, we uh, had a little bit of a combat there. I didn't really get a chance to fully explain to you guys how the combat works. So I'll do that now. Basically, there's two basic attacks in combat, which is the armed attack, which you basically attack with your weapon, and the unarmed attack, which is to break guard when someone is blocking. You smack them with a physical attack, and that'll break their guard, and then you can beat them up with your stick again. There's another uh, thing that you can do, which is blocking. You put yourself like this, and you can block, and if you block at precise timings, you can parry. I've been told that this is very much similar to the combat from Batman. Now, the thing is, I haven't played Batman in quite a long time, so I really don't know how similar it is. I mean, I, I seem to remember it being somewhat similar to this, but anyways, a lot of people just tell me, look, it's like the Batman combat. So, I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. Also, you can use a controller in this game, but to be completely honest, I wouldn't advise it for the PC version. I mean, I don't think the PlayStation 3 version and Xbox 360 version are out yet, but on the PC version, what happens is, yes, you can use the controller, but all the prompts you get, like for instance, if you get over here to the door, it'll say, use your left mouse button to open. Uh, with the controller, you actually have to press, uh, assuming that you have an Xbox 360, which is the standard de facto for PCs, for PC controllers these days, you will have to actually press, I think it's A, the button at the very bottom of your controller. But it will still show you the left mouse button instead of showing you an actual button prompt for your controller. And I thought that was extremely off-putting. And on top of that, um, it seems that it, it's just... It seems the controls weren't really thought out that much with a controller in mind because it usually when a game offers the controller option, I tend to really prefer playing it with a controller. But on this case, I just felt it really, really awkward for some reason. Okay, so here's the thing for a diversion. We have to actually go into the tool shed. Uh, and we also have Jay over there, which is the guy that's going to... We probably have to escape with Jay. I, th I thought that this character, since I spoke with him for the very first time, that he would probably be escaping with us. So, it's, it's just something that I kind of thought of the first time I talked about it. I mean, I think you guys will get the same vibe once you guys see how, how he talks. Tell me, Jay. You know if there's a way to get to the cistern? The cistern, huh? You're thinking of something. You looking to stock up on water? Maybe the question's just rhetorical. Well, there you go. So, I'll answer rhetorically, too. If somebody who's not you wanted to enter the cistern, he'd need an official pass from the boss himself, or he'd get shot two yards from the entrance. And if this person wanted to go there unofficially? Then there's only one way. Go across the mushroom field and have the balls to get through those fucking molds. Of course, to do that, he'd also need a key. The kind only the guards at the sentry post have, seeing the entrance has been closed after the infestation. So that person would have to find an understanding guard, like... Bob, for example. Thanks for the tip. All purely theoretical, of course. Gotta go. See ya. So, again, I mean, you guys have heard me complain a little bit about the voice acting. Some of it is uh, actually well done. Like, in this particular case, I don't think you have much reason to complain. But I've seen other cases where the voice acting is kind of weird and a little bit off-putting. But, again, you have to bear in mind, every single thing that I say in this particular First Impressions video, you have to cross check that with the fact that this is a $20 title. It is not really like a full-fledged, fully budgeted um, RPG experience. And I have to say that for $20 so far, I've been pretty well surprised. And looks like we found one of the tools. And I know that there's another workshop somewhere. I just don't know exactly where it is. We also have to go up to Bob. Uh, I, I don't like Bob, and and you see, I'm gonna have problems with Bob, because at the start of the game, I basically uh, didn't treat Bob right, and apparently Bob is supposed to be a nice guard, 
but I was acting the whole rebellious prisoner kind of thing, so everything that Bob would say to me, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, screw you, I'm a prisoner, I don't like you, I hate you, and all that kind of stuff. Which was obviously the bad choice, because now I'm gonna have problems actually, um, ah, talking to Bob. Ah, there you are, Roy. This? You kept me waiting. There were too many guards the last time we met. Wouldn't have been too smart to show our merchandise in front of so many eyes. But this is a bit quieter, so we can talk more openly. And you can understand where you went wrong. You don't know who you're dealing with, buddy. But don't worry. You'll learn. Is that a fact? I'll teach me. You can also you also have a lock-in system, but I tend not to use it often. But like here, see? You can do Oh, that was a parry right there. Should have explored that. Jesus Christ, there's four of them. This is actually annoying. Oh, there goes innocence. Yeah, I'm gonna get killed. <laughs> and this isn't normal. You know what I mean? I mean, in hard it gets even more challenging, but it, it, it is totally possible. It's just, um, I haven't mastered the combat system yet. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm gonna skip through the dialogue because you guys have already heard it. Damn it! Oh wow, terrible performance on my part. Mm, I'll probably have to go ahead and use some of the items that I have because this these guys are actually are actually a pain. This is probably one of the most challenging fights I've had so far. I mean, I fought a boss in the game, which was actually pretty cool. But this these are just thugs. They should be simpler. Okay, there we go. Let's start rolling. Oh, got parry. I really, you really can't let them surround you like that. There, one down. Counter. The hell? How do they dodge? I still don't get that. Sometimes they just dodge you. Aw, oh, damn it. Oof. Okay, this is not looking good. Let's see, do we have bombs still? Yes, we do, but fuck you. Boom! That's right. Uh, I'll also use a health thing. You have this tactics menu that you can use by using Q. Kick this guy in the face. Get on. Where's your little buddy? Seems to be stuck in here. Are you stuck, little buddy? Huh? You stuck? You feeling it? You feeling me? You feeling me, Holmes? Huh? What's up? Never <laughs> mind. Now you can search their bodies after you're done. And obviously you get items and whatnot. Innocence, you really need to... You really need to perform a little bit better. You didn't even take one of them out. You were completely useless. Not that I was a lot better to begin with. Also, I should have used the skill that I have, which is throw dirt. I could have thrown dirt at them, but... Again, like I said, I haven't mastered the combat system yet. Now then, let's go ahead and talk to Bob. Uh, Bob is actually over... Here, I want to say. Open the door. Don't beat it up. This is another thing that I have a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. You can't sheathe your weapon, which is a problem. Now, Bob is not going to like me, so I'm probably going to have to beat him into submission. The bare knuckle king. What do you want? Okay, another thing that I have to criticize this game for. At the start of the game, you beat up a fat guy. And for the next hour, every single character you encounter is going to tell you, Oh, I saw you beat the fat guy. I saw you beat the fat guy. Oh, like right now you saw this comment here. He said, Oh, the bare knuckle king, because I beat up the fat guy. <laughs> it's like, really, game? You don't have to throw it in my face that I beat up the fat guy like two hours ago or something. You know, I kind of know. I, I mean, I, I would appreciate the fact that a couple of people would remember that, but... Not every single character in the game has to do that. And they kind of do that. They kind of drive that point into the ground. Now, let's see. Uh, the cave near the drilling well. I dropped well. something personal in the cave. A memento of my parents. Pisses me off to have to leave it down there with those fucking moles. You know, I can get in trouble helping you with this. Anyway, take this note. It should get you in. I did good work in the well, so they asked me to clean up the mushroom field, too. And you said yes right away? I hope you know what you're doing, Roy. Anyway, 
It's true. It's a lot quieter right now down there. Here's the keys. You don't want to talk about your problems. Listen, it's all real nice, gotta admit. But can you tell me how it's any of your business? You really look like someone just died. All right, but not about me, okay? Ah, and it'll do you good to talk things over. And you were saying? Huh. Got nothing to tell you. It's just horrible here. Always the same stuff to do. Always the same ugly faces. Middle of this fucking desert. I'm bored to death. First I get sent to the front. Then here to watch over a bunch of guys. I never asked to be a soldier. Okay, I make some money. But it's not like I can spend it here. What's it good for? You got family waiting for you? Back home, maybe? Yeah. Things were good. Just the two of us before the war. We were even thinking about having a kid. And then... Really gets me. Not being with her. You can't get a transfer? You could get a pass or something. Maybe you could get transferred. Obvious you're not abundance. No such thing as passes. If I get sent anywhere, I'll be sent to the front. And I've seen my share of what's going down there. There's gotta be a way. Yeah. If I was to get declared an invalid, it's the only way. Um, I don't know how it works where you're from, but in Aurora, a guy does that and gets caught, he's a goner. Here too, but they can't stop me from thinking it, right? I haven't done anything wrong yet. <laughs> I could mess you up if that's all it takes. So you see, there's choices here. You can tell him you can escape, You, I can mess you up if it's all it takes. And the, the weird thing for me right now with this character is that I was really nasty to him the first time we met. Like he was saying, oh, you beat, you beat up the fat guy. And I was like, well, if you were doing your job, I wouldn't have to beat up the fat guy. So I thought he would be a little more hostile, but it turns out I could actually get him to talk about his problems. Well, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to say you could escape. Let, let's try you could escape. If you could get out of here, you could go back to your wife. You crazy. And be on the run the rest of my life. Actually, I've got a plan. Hey, listen up. I'd rather not have to repeat that kind of thing. I'm thinking about escaping by taking the train. Are you insane? And I guess you want to go back home. What would I do there? The plan's solid, I promise. I've thought of everything. And once we're out of here, we can split up on a shadow path and you can go back home. After all, we're closer to your place than ours. Your idea is absolutely insane. Do you want to stay and rot here? If you could get back to your wife, and you'd never have to stand guard in this rat hole again. That's... Shit, you're crazy. But you're right. I think I'll go with you. We're getting everything we need for the escape. When the day comes, we'll set off a diversion to keep your buddies busy and get out. Later, I gotta go. Gain access to the drilling well. Get into the drilling well tunnel and speed to recover the weapons. Not. There's the thing. I could have basically told him that I wanted to mess him up, and I'm not exactly sure what the consequence that would be, but I could probably mess him up and he would be sent uh, to back home. Instead, I've kind of enlisted his aid in my escape plan, so... I don't know. Uh, basically, there's going to be a lot more choices. Unfortunately, I was expecting this to be a more... Um, uh, I've been playing for some hours, so I was expecting this particular video to give me access to some more cool stuff. As in, I was expecting to actually see the escape and whatnot. Let's see. Uh, what else we got? We need to go to all those places. But before we actually go there, I wanted to show you guys the skill system. You guys have seen the combat. You guys have seen that there's a lot of emphasis on uh, talking and conversation and choices that you make. As you guys could see, like, for instance, the fact that I defended that mutant earlier, those four guys were waiting to me for me to beat me up. Probably if I have let them uh, beat up the mutant, they might have even given me something instead of wanting to beat me up. But in regards to that, let's also talk about the crafting system. So you have a crafting system in this game, which is you can make you 
you start out with an improvised weapon and then eventually you get a crack tube and for some reason my character doesn't show up what the hell yeah usually your character shows up here so you start out with this particular weapon here but then you pick up this crack tube and as you can see it's got some nails in it this is actually a modification that i did which is i put some nails on the handle and basically this makes my weapon do more damage but there's other upgrades that you can do and the interesting stuff about it is that it instantly changes the way that your uh, character looks like for instance look at the weapon this is the weapon we have right I did the nailing thing let's do reinforced fabric instead as you can see it changed the handle of the weapon right here you also can do an anti-skid thing so it puts some more stuff there so that the weapon doesn't slide off and each of these things will give you a different um, effect now you can do these upgrades with materials that you find throughout the world by exploring um, mostly through exploration and whatnot and uh, for instance, the anti-skid would give me um, more physical damage and more physical damage reduction. The nail thing just gives me physical damage. Oh, interesting. Why did I go with the nails? Might have not been the most... I think I went with the nails because it was cooler, but whatever. Then there's also the handguard, which as you can see gives you like this little handle here. And that increases your uh, damage reduction. There's also reinforced leather, which gives you a chance of critical hit and physical damage reduction. There's reinforced fabric for more chance of critical hit there's straight up fabric and as you can see each of these things changes the way a weapon looks you can do the same thing with your improvised weapon no actually the improvised weapon doesn't have any slots you see this little circle here this is an upgrade slot that you can up means you can upgrade a portion of your weapon there's the same thing in your uniform which currently i only have this torn prison uniform i have these worn clothes but they kind of suck because as you can see all the stats are worse not to mention that this looks way cooler than worn clothes. And it also has two upgrade slots. So if you go to the upgrade slots, right now I have metal. You can also add chitin. And as you can see, it changes. Uh, there, whoa, 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 no. Don't, don't upgrade anything. There's also reinforced leather. Again, changes. And this is for the shoulder slot. If you go to the forearms, you can do the same thing. Reinforced leather. Leather. And as you can see, it changes the stuff around here. So this is something that I actually really like. The, the particular upgrade system. It's almost like a slotting mechanic that you get in RPGs. Like, put a gem in this socket of your item. Except instead of putting gems, you're actually using materials that you're scavenging for and whatnot and changing the looks of your character that way. Now... Aside from inventory and upgrades and all that kinds of stuff, you have something which are called feats. Now, each of these feats will have uh, different uh, effects. Like, for instance, I have this particular feat that I've acquired that unlocks new craftable items, and then you can get the second version of this feat, but in order for me to do that, I have to craft 10 items first. And this, this particular feat, all it does is it starts unlocking your crafting features, but there's more, like there's combat spirit, which will um, give me more experience from defeating enemies. There's Snooper, which will give me extra chance of loot from defeating um, after I, when I'm looting enemies. There's Recycler, which will basically, what the hell is this? Enables the transform of common components with crafting kit. Well, it's something that involves um, transformation and components. There's Natural Leader, which requires me to reach some reputation level, which I haven't even seen. Well, here it is, reputation neutral, but... Uh, I have to reach the reputation level excellent, and it will increase my companion's health and damage. Charismatic, merchant price is cruel, chance of critical hit. There's a whole bunch of feats that you can have. Right now, I'm actually saving these points that you see right here for expert handiwork. So eventually, I'll do 10 craftings and whatnot, and then that will unlock me more craftable items. Because I kind of like the crafting system in this game. It's actually cool. Uh, then there's also these attributes, but I don't think you can actually do anything with it. It's just It just shows your stats. And then there's skills. So skills, you have three skill trees, uh, which is the combat skill tree, the renegade skill tree, and the technomancy skill tree. I don't have access to technomancy skill tree yet because I believe that in order for you to have access to this particular tree, you'll have to do certain events in game or something like that. And um, each of these trees will give you different effects. Like for instance here, you will get a skill called uh, stable shield whenever you get access to technomancy. And then you will you can upgrade this skill three times, and each upgrade will give you this. Shield can absorb another 25% damage, 50% duration of effect, 20% chance of critical. Then there's Empowering Fluid, which will give you maximum health and deep impact and whatever. Then there's the Combat Tree, which is obviously where I'm putting all my points, because you guys know me, I like melee more than everything. So as you can see, I started by fully upgrading Tough Skin so that I could have as much of a tank 
aspect to myself as possible. Uh, then there's weapons mastery, so I do as much damage as I possibly can, even though this thing is just unlocked, so I probably need to look this up, which gives me 5% critical chance, but mostly it's passive stuff. It's mostly passive things. You have, uh, probably the technomancy thing is going to give you more active skills. Not 100% sure how that's going to work, but there's, um, there's active skills as well, like for instance the one that I didn't use, the Art of Blinding. This is in the Renegade Tree. Renegade Tree is more about stealth and all that kinds of stuff. So this is your skill tree, and it seems very simple, but that's a good thing. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of those games. It's like, oh, here's a super extra duper complicated tree that you will never be able to figure out in your entire lifetime. Uh, like, for instance, let's talk about Path of Exile. <laughs> Even though I'm not criticizing Path of Exile, I believe there's a, a crowd for that type of game. It's just not me, because, I mean, that skill tree is redonkulous. But, it, again, I don't want to start criticizing another game, because that game is still pretty solid. But, coming back onto this, as you can see, pretty simple skill tree. I do have one particular concern about this skill tree, which is, I'm like, what, maybe two hours into the game? I already have all of these skills... Does that mean that by the time I reach the end of the game, I'm going to have all the skill trees? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going to work. So I'll have to see further ahead. Because I really hope that this, this is a lot about choices, how you develop your character as well, as opposed to just, you know, by the time you reach the end of the game, you're going to have the whole trees at your disposal. I hope that's not the case. Because I'm not a huge fan of that. I, I'm a fan of choice. It's like, look, you choose to play your game as a warrior, you play your game as a warrior. You choose to play your game more as a rogue, you have to play your game as a rogue and kind of take advantage of the rogue aspects of it. So, okay, that is um, your skills. Now let's look a little bit into crafting. So as you guys could see, I had the crafting thing. And I can actually go over here to the craft kit and I can craft injections. So the very first thing that I can craft is a health injection pack which you guys saw me use during that fight. Uh, and then I can also craft ammunition for nail guns. Now, I've had a nail gun earlier. Currently, I don't have it because, remember, I am a prisoner. I had it earlier because I volunteered to do a specific job that had a lot of risks. And they were like, oh, here's a, here's a nail gun. And I took the nail gun. It was actually kind of cool, but it's not like, oh, you get a nail gun and you get to do range damage. No, think of a nail gun more as, how should I explain this? It's more like a skill. It's a skill that you do every now and then. You pull out your gun, you take a shot. At least that's the way I see it so far. I'm not sure if it's going to change further up into the game or not. So this should give you a pretty good idea of all the depth there is to all the systems and stuff that are in place for this game. Now, the thing is, you guys might be wondering, well, $20, how long exactly is this game? Well, I honestly don't know. I did a little bit of research online, and um, there was a website called... I believe it's called Strategy Informer. I'm not 100% sure. And they said that the game was 15 hours long. Now, it's all about if you value this type of experience or not. Because as you can see, there's going to be a lot of dialogue. And this is something that I like. I like games that have a lot of dialogue that, you know, that you're actually that you actually met with certain choices. Like the one we just had with Bob, where we could choose to basically beat the crap out of him or help him out. And I was kind of helping him out because Bob is actually kind of a nice guy and I was a bit of a douche to him earlier. So I decided, look, let's just come up front with this guy. But you could just as easily uh, beat his face, I, I suspect. Like, for instance, there's also another quest in the game. And I was doing that quest last night uh, at the same time as my friend where there are these dogs that go completely crazy. And uh, where my friend found a way to cure the dogs... My logic was like, look, the dogs are here to help the guards. I don't want those dogs healthy. It's like there's a chance for me to impact the decision and get these dogs poisoned and get rid of them. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because, I mean, it's, it plays to the advantages of my character as far as I'm concerned. Oh, look, the mechanic. Oh, shit, I just... this stuff is finished. I'll never be able to fix it here. And they'll never change it. Oh, fuck me. This guy actually did a, a quest for him hey, earlier on. You're working in a different part of the camp, but you still look stuck. Ah, oh, no, but this camp is a real hole. A million things to repair, but no equipment. What do they take me for? A technomancer? I can't pull the parts out of my hat, and that asshole in procurement didn't follow up on my order. Apparently, the file got lost. Oh, when they see the Technomancer, they shit themselves, but when it comes to working, they're nowhere to be found. What do you need? 
four coils and some copper wire. Not easy finding good copper wire around here. You manage to get by, maybe you'll find some. I can always try. Thanks, Roy. That would really help me out. Least I can say. This time I'm writing to the boss. That dickweed's not getting away with it. He doesn't realize he's fucking everyone in the camp over. So this is the second time that I do a quest for this guy. You guys might be wondering, well, why are you doing quests for that for that guy? Is like a guard or something, like a technician? Yeah, he is, but he pays me, so I get to keep the this thing that um, is called a serum or whatever. Anyways, so Saul is to get the diversion. Let's see what this is about. This is the dog master. This is the guy that I got to poison the dogs. Hey Listen, Saul, how you doing? I figure you think you did good, but right now, I don't particularly feel like seeing you around. See? Alright, I'll leave you in peace. Aww. Aww, did your dogs die? Are you upset because of that? <laughs> oh yeah, there's uh, Saul. I don't know what I have to do with... Ah, I know, wait. It's to get the... Like I said, the workshop thing to get the tools that the guys want for the diversion. Which means that now we've completed this particular quest. Like I said, you can skip those animations and by now you're probably understanding why. Because a lot of times you're opening doors and whatnot. Ooh, there's actually stuff here. Excuse me. Thank you very much. This is something that you really need to keep an eye out for. So that, so that you make sure you pick up as much materials as possible. Because they come in handy when you're like upgrading your equipment and stuff. Now let's see, where was that thing? Uh, a diversion. Okay, upstairs. I'm constantly referencing the map because something that I really would like that they would do is they just put a mini-map so that I don't have this ugly-ass overlay. I like the fact that it's a very minimalistic UI until you get into uh, a fight because it actually helps really immerse you into the game itself. But um, I would really love a mini-map, even if I could toggle it on and off, just have a little mini-map in the corner instead of this ugly-ass overlay here. It would do heaps for me. Anyways, you're scum. You want with me, man? I have what you asked. I held for. up my end of the deal. Here are your tools. Thank you, man. We will respect our agreement. You have aided our cause, and we will aid yours by waiting for your signal. Perfect. Continue to get ready. It won't be long. When everything on our side's in place, I'll let you know when you can start your riot. I would never have thought of helping organize a dust revolt. I mean, I didn't think they could feel things like wanting to revolt or injustice. Whatever you think of them, you gotta remember that even a dog can turn on its master. And the dusts are a lot closer to us. Yeah, I see that now. I never talked to one of them before. Now I feel kind of ashamed, actually. Here's another problem that I have with the game. These little um, dialogues with Innocence, I think they're great. Don't get me wrong. I think the dialogues themselves are great. It's a great thing. But I would have really preferred it if it's like they would wait, like let's say, I don't know, 10 seconds after you speak with a character. Because sometimes these, these dialogues, they really break the immersion. Like for instance, Innocence right now was talking about this guy as if he was a dog. He was comparing this guy to a dog when we were standing right in front of him, you know, that is a problem. And it's like, guys might think, well, that wasn't really that problematic. And in this situation, I'll agree. In this particular situation, it was not that problematic. But at the very start of the game, when you ask the, when you uh, tell the mechanic, oh, I'm going to help you out and whatnot, because that mechanic that we saw earlier, uh, the quest that I did for him was at the very start of the game. And we were talking to the mechanic, and all of a sudden, Innocence starts another one of these dialogues like, why are we helping the mechanic? It's like, we shouldn't really be helping him. He's just like part of the guards and whatnot. And I'm standing right in front of the mechanic. And my character says, well, we're going to help him because he might pay us. <laughs> and it's like, you're standing right in front of it. I mean, come on. It totally breaks the immersion here. But I, I think that this is something that could be improved in a patch. Just add like a delay before the... Um, before Innocence starts talking, or let my character walk away from the character we were just talking to, and then have Innocence do his little dialogue thing, and I think that would be fixed. But again, you have to keep in mind, budget title, and I have to say, budget title so far, it's, I'm liking it. 
Let's see if I can do something a little bit more exciting. I think I can go to the I in order to come mushroom field. To clean. Show me. Shit, nobody tells me anything. Give me that note. I'll be needing it. Take the elevator. Ooh, here we go. And we have to basically beat the crap out of a whole bunch of moles now. I need to drill, get into the drilling well tunnels to recover the weapons. Ooh, because I hid some weapons earlier on in a, in, a, in a quest where a guard told me to go and find some weapons in the ground. And I could give him the weapons, and I'm not sure what would happen if I was to do that. But basically I decided to hide the weapons instead, so now I got a, a quest to go and get the weapons. Again, it seems that it's all, there's a lot of emphasis on choice, which is something I like. I really like the fact that that's the way they're doing it. And just kind of getting as much items as I possibly can. And let's go down here, I guess. Oh yeah, this was the tunnel we went down the first time. So this is where we fought moles the very first time. Where the hell is Innocence? Innocence, what the frack are you doing, dude? <laughs> like stuck. Come on, Innocence, don't get stuck on stuff. I'm gonna need your help down there to beat up those moles, dude. And here's another thing, moles are actually immune to the dirt throw thing, this. They're immune to that because they're moles, they're blind. Again, this comes the pro here comes the problem that I can't, I can't figure out a way to manually sheath the weapon. Oh, what the hell is this? There's guards down here. I'm gonna have to beat them up. Screw you. Oh, that counterattack. Damn it. Let's try and do the dirt thing. Oh, you're blind, are you? Oh, this guy has glasses, so he probably can't be blinded as easily. Oh, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you. No guards, no guards on me, dude. Hey, 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 stop that. Stop beating up innocence. Ooh, <laughs> what a beatdown. That's three guards. Serum ex extraction syringe. Using the serum extraction syringe, Roy can drain serum from his defeated enemies. Extracting serum is lethal to the victim and will affect Roy's reputation. After a battle, press E near a knockdown character to finish them off and collect serum. Interesting. Okay. First of all, I'm going to frisk you. I wonder if I'm going to just be a cold-blooded killer because I can't extract just serum off of these guys. Well. They were probably going to kill me, so screw them. I'll take your serum. Let's see if Innocence says anything. You got a problem with that, Innocence? Didn't think so. Lest I have to beat you up and then just collect serum from you. But anyways, I think at this point you guys get a, a pretty good idea of what the game is about. I was expecting to have some better footage for you guys, but unfortunately this is kind of uh, what turned out. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this particular first impressions video. Uh, as for myself, my impressions of the game so far is that for $20, I think you got some really good value here. This is what I can say. I mean, again, it's not going to be the best game in the world. Definitely not. There's going to be some issues with the voice acting. Uh, there's going to be a couple of things that are going to take, take you away from that immersive experience. But I feel that the systems in place still make a pretty solid game. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.